This week, I'm going through everything you need to know in order to set up and shoot an interview. Hello, my name is Simon Cade, and this is DSLR Guide. So one of the main things that freelance filmmakers do is record interviews. I've done a, at least five interviews, I'd say, and each time you kind of pick up something new. So I thought I'd just make a little video which condenses as much as I can into one little video. Everything from how to talk to the interviewee, how to set up the shot, and then also just what kind of questions you want to be asking them. So the first thing is to make sure that you've prepared your questions. So you need to talk to the client and make sure that you know roughly what you want the story of your video to be about. So if you don't know them at all, then it's very difficult to form questions. But if you know that they have one particular interesting thing which you want to find out more about, then make sure you ask questions on that. So there are generally two types of questions. The example of the first one would be, do you like football? And the second one would be, what do you think of football? Now the first one would get you a very short answer, so they'd probably say yes, and then they might say a reason, or, but the important thing is that they'd, it's a closed answer. Whereas if you say, what do you think about football? Then they'll say, oh, I think, and then they'll go off on a longer spiel about what they think about football. And that, for an interview, generally is, is what you want, because that gets them talking, and it doesn't just mean that you have a lot of footage of someone saying yes, or yes, because. So that's the first one. And then the other thing that I like to do is to actually almost script out what you would like them to say. So obviously you can't predict everything, but if you think, oh, it'd be nice if they said this, this, and this, and then just try and formulate questions which will get an answer that's similar to that. So then as you go through the interview, you can see, have they covered the sort of points that I wanted? Now, of course, they may, it, the whole interview may go in a completely different direction, but it's good to have that basis where you're not just thinking of questions because you're focusing on the answers at the end of the day. So once you've got your questions, the next thing is to set up the shot. Now there are three aspects to this, composition, lighting, and audio. So the first thing is composition. You really wanna concentrate a lot on how the shot looks. There are some key guidelines which you can choose to use or not use, but it's definitely worth being aware of them. So the first one is to think about the background. Now generally, you're gonna have the interviewee in the foreground, which leaves you with a lot of creativity in order to choose what kind of background you want. So you could just go to their house and film them in their living room. And that may be okay for certain interviews, but it really this is where it really depends on what it is that the interview is about. So if you're filming a skateboarder, then why not have them in a skateboard shop with lots of skateboards in the background? Or if it's a carpenter, then do it in their workshop. Because if you can have a relevant background, then that actually helps to make the whole thing more convincing and it's also a lot more interesting than just having them against a white background. Now the other thing to think about with composition is about adding depth to the shot. Generally the way of doing things, although these are definitely not rules, these are just guidelines of things that you can do if you want to, but having diagonal lines is generally a good thing to do, rather than having someone against a wall like this, if you have the wall actually going off into the distance where you can see the perspective, then that actually generally gives it a more pleasing look rather than if you were to just film someone up against a wall. But the important thing is to always just go back to what is this interview about? What mood am I trying to convey with this interview? So the rule of thumb is to have the interviewee looking towards the inside of the frame rather than the outside of the frame. So then you put the person on the inside of the frame. In this case, it would be on camera left so that then they are looking more into the middle and then that gives it again a generally more pleasing look compositionally. So the next thing is lighting. Now interview lighting is kind of known for being in a way the most boring so you could just do the standard three-point lighting key, fill and rim light and while that's fine you could th again think of that as the standard and then say okay well let's build on that and let's have for this video because it's quite dramatic let's have their face really dark so it's almost silhouetted or you could do any number of crazy things with your lighting if you feel that that actually complements the story that you're trying to tell with the interview. So lighting, generally I would say just go for something simple, key light and rim light maybe, that's what I tend to do. But again, it's all about thinking 
what fits with the tone and the mood of this interview. So the next thing is audio. Now since you've got them sitting down, it makes sense to not use a lavalier microphone because you can set up a boom pole and use a boom mic. That way you can just channel in on their voice and not hear all the background noise around them. So the main thing to think about when you're setting up your mic is listen out. If there's a refrigerator on this side, then put the boom mic on the other side so that it's facing away from that. But the main thing to remember is to keep the microphone as close to them as possible and pointing directly at their mouth or chin area. And obviously make sure that the boom mic isn't in the shot. But the other thing that people sometimes miss is to look out for where the light is coming from because the boom mic can actually cast a shadow onto the face. And this is something you really don't want. So just, just bear in mind what's happening with the lighting. Make sure you're not causing any shadows. So once all the equipment is set up and the person you're interviewing has arrived, it's very important to focus a lot on making sure that the person is very at ease because it can be very intimidating being filmed but especially when you have a microphone in your face and you've got lights all around you, a lot of people can really find it very intimidating. And there are a few things you can do just to reassure them and make them as comfortable as possible. So the first thing is to make sure that you remind them as multiple times that, the, that you'll be editing the final piece. So they don't have to say their answers in one go. And it doesn't matter if they make a mistake, they can just start again or they can carry on. And you just want to reassure them that it's not a live TV production and that you're just, you know, you'll get lots of footage and they'll just choose the best bits. And this is really helpful for them to be at ease in knowing that it doesn't matter if they make any mistakes. And then the other thing is to just let them know that it's actually okay if they repeat themselves. Because often you will actually want to ask the question more than once. So that way you can choose in editing which one is the best one. So in a general conversation, they might skip out saying something again if they've said it before, but you've got to say to them, look, you can, say, you can repeat yourself as many times as you like because we're just going to choose the absolute best bits. So as well as the person you're interviewing, there's someone else who's very key in making sure that the shoot turns out good, and that is the actual interviewer. So this is the person who has the piece of paper with the questions on it, and they're just going to be aiming to have, again, really relaxed conversation and this this is the person who can really add assurance to the person who's being interviewed by nodding and just generally looking interested in their answers so this sounds a bit silly but if you just kind of sit there and just nod you don't have, you don't have to obviously make noise but if you just look as genuinely interested in what they're saying as as possible then that will help them who because often they are a bit doubtful about saying oh that wasn't very good I need to say that again but if you just just be like really encouraging and really reassuring then that goes a long way and the other thing is to after they've answered their question don't just go straight on to the next question because often firstly it will make them feel a bit like you don't really care about their answer so just leave leave a pause and because the, the other thing is often people will pause as if they have finished the answer but then with the pause they'll actually go and they'll say more and that might be the best bit because they've had some time to think about it. So always leave just a little gap after they've answered their question in case they want to say anything else. So that's pretty much it. As long as you take some time to set up and then just aim to have a really relaxed atmosphere then the interview will most likely go very smoothly. But there's one thing I'd just like to leave you with and that is the idea that you don't have to follow exactly the general routine. You know, the, the, the cliche, we'll call it, is good, having three-point lighting, rule of thirds, you know, very basic, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I would really encourage you to think about what the project is and then think, right, how can we improve that standard interview shot and make it tailored to the story and the mood and the tone that I'm trying to convey? So start with the cliche in its most basic form and then just adapt it a little bit or maybe a lot to fit with the story that you're trying to tell and to convey the mood that you want to. So yeah that's it for interviews this week and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.